When we think about the places we live, work, and play, we rarely stop to consider the impact of how they're built. But today, with sustainability at the forefront of global concerns, construction has taken on a whole new meaning. It's no longer just about putting up buildings, it's about creating spaces that are smarter, greener, and kinder to the environment. Makati Development Corporation, or MDC, is leading the local construction industry in this endeavor. For the past five decades, the company has been Ayala Land's construction business unit, building over 800 projects nationwide, from commercial buildings, housing, malls, industrial facilities, and infrastructures. As they celebrate their 50th anniversary milestone, the company is positioning itself as the sustainability trailblazer in the local construction industry by pioneering a construction approach that integrates sustainability in the way they design and build projects and encouraging everyone from its employees, vendors, and business clients to get on board and help in building a greener future for the country. In this episode, let's take a closer look at how MDC is making this possible one innovative step at a time. I'm Paolo Obrera, and this is One Small Act. We spoke to MDC's Chief Operating Officer, Robert Boogs Baffrey, and Jeremy Acosta, head of MDC's Architectural and Engineering Division, as they share how MDC integrated sustainability into its business ecosystem, catalyzing green construction in the local industry. All right, folks, let's get straight into it. Sustainability, the construction business. Why do you think it's so important to combine these two things and why does it make a lot of sense to do it now? And it ultimately comes down to the fact that, simply put, the construction industry is contributing 40% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And we felt as MDC being the largest contractor in the Philippines, it's really important for us. It's like an obligation or responsibility to make sure we catalyze the industry and make sure that we're able to really drive sustainable design moving forward. So MDC is of course part of the greater family of the Ayala Land family. You know, and the overall goal of Ayala Land is to have net zero emissions by 2050. So we're contributing to that. I think for us, it goes a bit deeper than that mandate because like I said, within the group, we're the construction company and we have the largest impact on the overall footprint right. on carbon. How do you continue working in a way that makes sense so that you can continue to grow the business and grow it sustainably? First part of it is that you have to be humble and practical in the sense that we know we can't do it by ourselves, right? So we have to engage all of the stakeholders across the entire value chain, from our business partners to a new graduate um, that's recently joining our workforce. And then we created a framework that we feel is very comprehensive, understandable, and, and executable. It all starts with people. Internally, we formed our own Sustainability Council headed by no less than our management committee. We launched Mission Green. That's our employee engagement campaign program for sustainability. As an example, we mobilized people to plant trees in Ayala Land Inc.'s very own carbon forest. Various uh, community engagements and CSR activities focused on communities with MDC areas of uh, operation. Another key element is that we we're fortunate enough through our mother company, Ayala Land, to be, like I said, one of the biggest in the country. So we're able to leverage our scale to be able to influence uh, suppliers, to do things in new ways. We invite in sustainability not only in our people through internal stakeholder management, but also in community development. 33% of our total workforce are local hires. In the absence of skilled workers on, on certain sites, we train people. We have our own test the accredited skills training center. Let's talk about construction in particular. Can we talk about some of the practices and some of the new materials and ways we go about it? Ensuring the sourcing of eco-friendly construction materials, we are implementing sustainable supply chain. We started uh, this by advocacy events. We have vendors cap behind. We exchange ideas with our uh, vendors. And we also have our own MDC Builders Expo. We call it BuildEx, uh, forging sustainability partnerships with our vendors to influence them on being their part in the supply chain. Let's help people understand what it is about construction and development 
that really has such uh, an impact on the environment and on uh, the planet as a whole. It's really, you know, three main things. It's concrete, it's steel, and it's the transportation required to get the concrete and steel to the project sites. For steel, for example, is the use of green steel. That is 87% uh, less carbon footprint than the, the, the conventional steel that is made of uh, recycled scrap metal that is manufactured using an electric arc furnace powered by renewable energy. And this is supplied by Steel Asia, our biggest steel rebar vendor partner. We signed a MOAD with them to make this happen. When you say concrete, it means cement, sand, and gravel. Our answer is green concrete, and that's 24% less carbon than the traditional. We use fly ash to replace cement. It's a byproduct of uh, coal burning from power plants and we are the largest producer of green concrete. Obviously, you don't do this yourself. You don't work in a vacuum. You work with suppliers, you work with vendors. How much of an uphill battle has it been to convince vendors to embrace the same sustainability practices uh, that you guys have committed to? Well, it's been uh, a really uphill battle. But at the end of the day, most especially those that are at the higher side of the carbon footprint, they have been very uh, cooperative. The rest may take quite a while for them to imbibe. That's why uh, we do this uh, external uh, activities for them to be engaged. When we return, we'll examine how MDC uses innovative construction methods such as modular construction and transition to new energy through the use of EVs in construction and how these efforts help them achieve their sustainability goals. With a solid foundation of expertise in engineering solutions, building roads and constructing skyscrapers, MDC thrives on the pillars of safety, quality, timely delivery, cost efficiency, and sustainability. Now to further achieve its net zero goals, MDC has taken essential steps to make this a reality through its framework for sustainable construction. What about the construction process as the design? The design for modular construction is, is certainly one of those things that we need to touch on because it, it makes you know what you do far more efficient. We have what you call BFMC, that means design for modular construction. This means productization, which means while we design, we think about how to construct it in an assembly form, meaning we modularize, we standardize, the industrialized process manufactured, mass produce, so prefabricated, done off-site, then we, we bring it on-site just to assemble. Some of the benefits of uh, DFMC, manufactured in a controlled environment, so quality is easier to be managed. Less manpower on-site, meaning it's safer for our workers, significantly less wastage. And of course, highly efficient in process, less carbon, more sustainable. Uh, we are now using this extensively in two forms. One is a prefabricated components, meaning parts of the building, like prefabricated stairs, slabs, walls, and the other is volumetric. This is a new uh, effort for us. Whole rooms, we started off with the prefabricated bathroom. Finished, we bring it up the building. Eventually, we translated into bigger volumes, such as hopefully hotel rooms and the whole condominium units. In simple terms, how does MDC ensure that your activities do not have a great impact or permanently damage the planet? Our advantage is that uh, we have the capability to manage a project from end to end. Even before design, technical due diligence, of course design and then construction. In technical due diligence, we define the factors that we need to preserve. In design, we make sure that we integrate sustainable design practices. And in construction, we have a construction environmental management plan that is a set of construction management practices focused on environmental compliance and we audit our sites to ensure conformity. One of the big things that you can be proud of and lay claim to being a pioneer for is being one of the first organizations to embrace EVs and our, our electric heavy equipment. Tell us about how that big leap happened and, and how you're doing it. Our leading program with the is fuel emissions. As a general contractor, much of vehicular emissions come from heavy equipment and the challenge is the availability and reliability of technology. But despite this, we grabbed the opportunity to be the first local contractor to use an electric mixture and an electric trailer tractor. We have a number of EVs also. Uh, we purchased from AC Mobility, 
And that marks the start of our long-term refleeting plan or refleeting program future proofs the company manage the risk for volatile oil prices. We are therefore starting to establish infrastructure for EMPs, like charging stations. Even our own uh, MDC corporate center has its own charging stations in the building. Our EV program aims to achieve zero emission, zero fuel costs, and of course, our vehicles will be quite state-of-the-art and ahead of its time. The common you know, uh, misconception, or perhaps it's true, is sustainable practices cost more money. Sustainable practices need more effort. Yeah. Sustainable practices means changing the way you used to do things to a system yeah. where it's not what you're used to and there is a little bit of a learning curve. How big of a challenge has it been and how much really is it uh, a challenge to change? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. You know, ultimately, we're a business and we have clients and, and just to be very honest with you uh, the trend is changing but ultimately sometimes the clients just want the cheapest solution available and sometimes that doesn't always match with sustainability but i think that's where the innovation comes in that's where the drive comes in to look for solutions that are you know not just more environmentally protective but are also still cost neutral at the very least you know we're employing things like electric vehicles and you know, we study that because ultimately you have to make sure that the total life cycle cost is at least neutral. And we found that it actually is given the price of course of fuel now. So that's one initiative we're looking at. So it's things like that, that if we're able to scale up, but still keep in mind that you know, the customer has, you know, has to balance different values and they, they want to be sustainable, I think, but they also have to run their business. So it's about finding a way to merge those two, as you said. What can we look forward to moving forward for NBC? What are the, the big plans on the horizon? We will significantly reduce our emissions. Uh, we will be scaling up sustainability initiatives with high impact results, maximizing the use of renewable energy, well established EV uh, ecosystem, electric transport, electric equipment, technologically advanced and eco friendly materials institutionalized sustainable construction methods. And also reinforcing this vision is our advocacy for a green building certification. We have dedicated team of accredited uh, experts, professionals for certifications like LEED, EDGE, WELL, BIRDE, and so forth. Though. We offer this to our clients for them to reduce the impact of the building sector to global warming and natural resource depletion. We're at the start of our journey, I'd say. I think we're, we're leading the industry, catalyzing the industry and pioneering, so to speak. But I think at the end of it all, it's about at least starting somewhere, right? And getting that proof of concept that we can do this. To be honest with you, it's about the people of MDC. And it's about people, you know, finding that culture of really caring and not just something on paper, but something that's really sincere and genuine in that they do want to do things differently. They do want to protect the environment. They do want to ensure that we continue to build places that people love, but the people that live there can really genuinely say that this was built the right way, protecting the environment and the planet. So we're at the onset of something great, but it's going to take a lot of bravery, for lack of a better term, to, to really realize we have to do things differently. But I think, you know, we're, we're getting there. I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, uh, there's a common vision across different stakeholders that's starting to take root. So we're hoping that continues to grow. Sustainability isn't just a buzzword. It's something that we all have a stake in. MDC is proving that by rethinking how we build, we can make a positive impact on the planet, one project at a time. Whether it's through reducing waste, embracing green technologies, or partnering with like-minded suppliers, their work shows us that every effort counts. And just like MDC, we can all do our part because big changes often start with small, meaningful acts. Once again, I'm Paolo Obrera reminding everyone that we may have a daunting task ahead of us, but we've got the solution as long as we all pitch in. And it all begins with one small act.